Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. Today we're taking a look at Super Camelot. Super Camelot is brought to you by Lynn Vander Studios and Catalyst Game Labs. It plays two to four players, ages 14 and up, and each game takes 30 to 40 minutes to play. Great, well come journey with us to the 8-bit world of Camelot. Super Camelot is truly a throwback to those old 8-bit video games of old, like Zelda from Nintendo, Super Nintendo, you truly have that feel as you're moving across the board in the 8-bit world of Albion. You're moving out from the castle and your main goal here is to find the relics of old. You're trying to find the earth, um, fire, and water in order to return them back to the castle so you can claim the Holy Grail. Now there's an alternate way of winning. If you collect 40 gems before someone has grabbed the grail, you too can win. Indeed. And there are three different types of gems. There are. Thing. There's green ones that are worth one point, there's blue ones that are worth five, and red that are worth ten. Right. And some of the items you collect even are worth gems as this well. Is, this is true. So there's a lot of ways you can get yeah. things in the game. Uh, you, can, you can find keys to unlock chests. You can kill enemies yeah. uh, before they kill you. Indeed. And if you're lucky enough, these things, uh, even bushes, uh, as right. you hack them down, might drop things of interest and value to you. Or they might reveal enemies to attack you. You never know what's you never working know in what's those hedges. Yeah, that's right. And the other really neat thing here is that they truly have captured that video game experience. As you move into a tile, items appear. You know, chests mm -hmm. and, and bushes and um, rocks, whatever might that tile calls for will appear. And then as you move out of the tile, things then disappear and repopulate into whatever tile you're moving into. That's right. So it definitely is capturing that video game feel. All right, so let's take a closer look at how it plays. This is what a typical setup will look like. You're gonna start with four tiles, creating a two by two grid, then putting the 3D castle in the middle and contained within is the Holy Grail. Now this grid can expand into a four by four grid throughout the game. Now after setting up the board in the initial configuration, each player will choose one of six characters from Arthurian legend. They will get a player board as well as a standee that matches the character. Their player boards show three shields in the upper right hand corner. Uh, each of these shields can either be on the whole side or on the fractured side. Mm -hmm. The whole side represents two points of health, mm -hmm. the fractured side represents one. So each character starts with six points of health. The card also shows the five actions each player can take during their turn. They can choose three of these actions and perform them in any order. Right. Lastly, it shows in the bottom left the special power that particular character has. All right, the first two actions we're going to take a look at are two that you probably are going to use most frequently, movement and attack. Movement, you've got three spaces, and you have to move orthogonally throughout this world, just like in an old 8-bit video oh, game. That's right. And there's all kinds of uh, obstacles that you're going to encounter along the way. All the tiles in their corner have obstacles, trees that, or bushes that you're going to run into, and bushes within the tile that you're going to be running into as well, and as well as enemies or boulders. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of things can block your way, and you have to figure out how to move around them. Now, attacking. This is really important that when you do attack, um, you're going to be rolling dice to see not only if you hit your attacker or the enemy, oh, but you're also seeing if they drop loot. Mm -hmm. And the icons here that you're gonna be looking for are the gym icons and the sword icons. Now there's also a star. When you roll a star, you get to be, it's a wild basically, you can choose whatever you want it to be. Um, but when you attack, you kind of attack in this swing, like an arc, yeah, right? Yeah. So you're going to hit like in front of you and to, uh, adjacent to you and at the diagonal. Right. So you potentially, if you're positioned properly, you can hit up to three things. But you have to hit them individually. You have to have enough dice hits to actually destroy them all. And a lot of the enemies are only worth one point. Like if you're taking down um, some of the mimics or whatever in this game that are the lesser enemies, they only require one point of damage. But like the knights that you're black gonna be, knights, black knights, yeah. they require two. But it's a really efficient way, you just roll the dice, see if you hit what you hit, what might drop items anywhere from, if you're just chopping down trees, it's gonna be litter, and you never know what's gonna end up in there. <laughs> trees could reveal more black knights, so you have <laughs> to be careful. Uh, but you definitely wanna get some gems and things potentially falling from these trees as well. So there's a lot of neat things, a lot of cards going to show you what might fall. And as you defeat these enemies, you're going to end up with bigger items and lesser items, depending on what type of enemy that you attack. As Mark said, there are various creatures that drop 
interesting pieces Indeed. of loot. And one of the pieces of loot that you really want is a small key. Right. Now, you can get this uh, through some of the, the smaller uh, monsters, mm -hmm. like the mimics and the, uh, the plants, the carnivorous plants. Uh, the bigger monster, the Black Knight, will actually uh, has there's a greater chance of him yeah. dropping these small keys. But there's our third action involves a larger key. On one tile in the set of 16 tiles, there is a large key, a big key. And the third type of action you can perform is to go to that, that tile, go to that square, and pick up the big key. Now you're saying, well, why do I care about that? Yeah. It's because the fourth type of action that you can perform is opening up chests. There are a lot of small chests oh, in the yeah. game, and those require you to spend one small key. But there's one tile with a big chest, and you need the big key for that. If you're lucky, maybe they'll be right next to each other, the big key tile and the big chest tile. But uh, most often, you'll probably find them <laughs> opposite sides of the board. Yeah, exactly. So these chests, both large and small, have really important pieces of oh, loot in them that can be yeah. game-changing. They're, they're equipment you can wield or, or wear. Uh, so you'll want to be searching for these keys and, and then opening up these truly chests. Truly game-changing. They can be. I mean, they absolutely can be. Especially those items that you get, right? However, from the big chest, you're really just going after a big bulk of gems. Yes, the big chests have really, really big values of gems. In fact, one of them has 20 points of gems Indeed. on one of the cards. And that's half the value that's to where the, you need to be. Exactly. So you, you just never know. You know, I like that there's a couple different paths here to victory. Right, right. So if you're already collecting quite a few gems this, and you're saying, well, I'm not that far away, maybe I'm going to go after the big chest. There's one more type of action, the fifth action, and that is an action that you will be using if you encounter one of the tiles that have a shrine on them. There's an earth shrine, there's a water shrine, and there's a fire shrine. And in each of these shrines, there is a set of relics. Now, there's enough relics that each player can have one. You can't hoard them. Each player can only take one type of each relic. But the fifth type of action would be going to that shrine and picking up that relic. If you get all three of those relics, you can return to the castle, unlock it, and get the grail. Now, as Randy mentioned before, all these characters that you potentially can play in the game have special abilities. Things like changing dice faces, like re-rolling dice, things of that nature. Yeah, so for example, um, Merlin gives you the ability, when you get small loot or big loot, mm -hmm. you draw two cards, not just one. You draw two and choose one choose of them one. and discard the other, which can be very useful in yeah. trying to get something you really need. Uh, Assault lets you exchange one of your single sword dice faces and upgrade it to a double dice face. Mm -hmm. And when attacking, Lancelot has the ability to re-roll one of his dice. Yep. Now, after a player does all their actions, does all the things their heart desires, <laughs> then the enemies get their own turn. That's right. So after each player turn, the enemies get a chance to attack. Now, there are some creatures uh, here or some items here. They're no longer a threat. Bushes right. and boulders don't make a They're difference. They're just blocking the way. And only the enemies on your tile are activated. Correct. It's like the old video games in the sense that if you've been to previous screens and had left enemies behind, mm -hmm. those enemies don't suddenly sneak up on yeah, you from right. the edges of the screen. It's only the enemies that are on your tile that are activated. Now, these enemies come in three different types. Mm -hmm. There's the carnivorous plant. And the carnivorous plant will try to uh, attack you either if there's a if there's an unbroken path either a uh, straight path yep. orthogonally or diagonally it yeah. will try to spit venom at you yep. and do up to two points uh, of damage now you can deflect that each time an enemy attacks you you get the ability to roll one die and if a shield appears on the upper face of that die you deflect all, all damage, damage that yeah. that enemy tried to do to you no matter how much he was trying to do to you you mm -hmm. deflect it all so the carnivorous plants um, do up do two points of damage yeah. The mimics are a different type of Ugh, creature. They're they, the worst. They, they're bad, but not because of the damage. No, they, they try to do because that. they take your stuff. They do. They uh, Mimics can crawl around your tile, and they are limited to that tile, and if they can get to you through an unbroken path, yep. they will then latch onto you. They'll actually be on your square, yep. and they will at first attempt to steal something from you. They will actually do it if you have anything they Indeed. can steal, yeah. and that suddenly becomes the property of the mimic. You will, you will put that face down, uh, in front of you and that, that item that they've stolen has no power right. until a mimic has been killed. Now if you kill it, it comes back to you, it turns face up. If another player kills it, yeah. it transfers to that player. <laughs> so it's very important that if you have the chance yes. that you kill it first. But remember, this happens at the end of the player turn, so right. other players, if they're nearby, have that opportunity. Uh, the last type of enemy is mm. the, the big one, and that is the Black Knight. Right. Um, the Black Knight moves just like the Mimic did. It traverses a, If it can traverse an unbroken right. path and Again. get to you, what it will do 
is it will try to do three points of damage to you. Now, again, you get to roll that die so that uh, you can deflect it. Right. But if you can't, it does three points of damage, and that's half your health. Yeah. So that's pretty significant. If it can't get to you, but it, <laughs> but it can get to another player, it will then attack that player Indeed. instead. And that's a strategy you might choose to pursue is you might move to a tile where another player yep. had already uh, interacted with the Black Knight, if you can move to that tile and maybe be hiding behind bushes and boulders, that Black Knight will activate, and instead of threatening you, it will threaten the other player. Indeed, and of course, those Black Knights drop much better loot. They do. Yeah, so They're, that's another reason to actually go after those guys. Right, so there's that trade-off. It's like on one hand, uh, if, you can, if you can kill them and move there on your turn next to a Black Knight and actually kill them, then you get something from it. Right. But if it survives into the enemy phase, well, then you're going to be facing yeah. big damage. And of course, they're stronger too, so it requires two hits to kill a Black That's Knight. That's true. Yep. Now, another thing we didn't mention, as you move across the board and items have dropped, like gems and things of that nature, mm -hmm. Just like the old video games, you just move across them to pick them up. It's not a separate action, unless right. it's the big key right. or a relic that you need to grab. But in general, just like the video games of old, you're just moving across the area, and as you move, you pick stuff up as you go. Mm -hmm. Now, there are wallets or pouches that you, <laughs> that you have, each character has as well. And as you collect these gems, you try to keep them secret from right, everybody, right. and you're going to be putting them behind your little screens so no one knows exactly where you are in your process of collecting gems. Right. Although many things drop gems and loot, one important thing to remember is that just like the video games of old, when you move off of that screen, yep. those things usually go away. They do. Okay, and the problem is everything resets except for the chest. Yeah. So if you've already opened a chest, just like the old video games, and you leave the screen and you come back, it's like the chest, chest is, is still, still empty. has been looted. <laughs> yeah, right. Everything else though, and the problem is the chest is looted, any loot that had been dropped peripherally right. uh, has disappeared and all the monsters and obstacles have been regenerated. So if you said, oh, at least I killed that whole hedge that was around the chest, yeah. I'll be able to get to, oh, I can't, no, it's back again, Indeed. sort of thing. So that's important to remember before you leave a tile, if, if there's no other player on that tile, right. everything will regenerate when you get back, except really for the things you want to regenerate. Indeed. <laughs> all right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So definitely keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now with that said, you know, they've really captured that 8-bit video game into the tabletop. You really, they've really done a good job with that. Yeah, and, and so for many of you who've actually played those games yeah. and are nostalgic, this will provide some of that. For many of you younger people, though, you are... You've been stuck, stuck on the high-res games <laughs> that you have to play on your 4K TV. That's and right. Our hearts really go out to yeah, you. And maybe sad, you, you can really. indulge in this just to get, get a feel of that world gone by. Indeed. And there's a lot of really neat items in this game. There's like, one of my favorites was the magnet. And it just collects items off the board so you don't have to waste a lot of movement collecting and picking up things. Right, right. You can just go to the corner of a tile and right. use the magnet and all of a sudden pull something from the other corner of that tile. Indeed. And there's like giant weapons too. There like, are. There's there's a bomb which yeah. actually you can, you can use use anywhere in your tile to uh, do up to two points of damage, right. or actually, do yeah, do, do one or two points of damage for a, a three by three square. Now the key is, it's great for uh, dealing with monsters yeah. and, and obst obstacles yeah. and things like that, but it can also do damage to you if it happens that the monster you're trying to kill is right next to you, mm -hmm. uh, and you can't get that three by three square far yeah. enough away. It hurts everybody, not just you, but <clears throat> any other players. And other though. players yeah. too, and so we found that out, that that's one way to keep Mark from always grabbing <laughs> victory. So, if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. Absolutely. And I think that's it from us. Yeah. And until next time, folks, we'll, we'll see, see you, you at the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.